Good day, everyone. Welcome to an iFunda recorded tutorial. We're going to be doing an A-level past exam question. The examination body or examining body is ZIMSEC. So we're going to be focusing on the topic flexible budget, which is usually found under standard costing. The flexible budget or budgeting is usually one of or usually a tricky question or tricky topic for most students. And most students find difficult or face difficulties in attempting questions like these. So we'll probably try to break this question down so that it makes a lot more sense uh, to you guys. And also try to bring in some information that might prove helpful, helpful to you guys during an exam. So just touch briefly on what a flex budget is. So we usually use um, a flex budget as a budget that's actually prepared to show revenues, your costs, your profits. That should have been expected from the actual level of production and sales. So usually a flex budget is the one that's then compared with the actual results or performance of a business um, for a certain period. And these variances make much more sense. So for those of you who've actually, um, who actually conducted a tutorial with us, we kind of did an example on why it makes more sense to use a flex budget when you're doing your variance analysis than for you to use an original budget when your actual level of activity had actually um, differed or changed from the one you had actually originally budgeted for. So let's um, delve deep into this question. So this was a paper three question. Um, it was question four, November 2015, for reference sake, for those of you who have past exam papers. So we are told that Abbott Limited is planning to manufacture its own furniture in order to maximize profits. The standard cost for one of its products, a computer disk is as follows. So we've got direct materials, two kgs at $6 per kg, all right? So as, as we are going through this question, you're probably in an exam, you probably have a, your pencil around or your pen around. Some quick calculations will make it easier for you when you start to answer um, when you, your, your question, all right? So already, we already now know that two kgs for direct materials, they cost, the material costs um, $6 per kg and we require two kgs to actually manufacture one disc. So based on that information, we can just do a quick calculation. We're gonna say the two kgs times $6 per kg. For us to get $12 per kg. So $12, is the direct material cost for us to actually produce one disc. All right, so that's a quick calculation. We go to the next one, very labor. Okay, so please, please just note that this information here is information that relates to producing one product, which is what? One computer disk. So this is like the unit cost of producing one computer disk, all right? So we know that um, it will take 45 minutes to produce one computer disk, 45 minutes of direct labor hour, or, or direct, for direct labor, it will take 45 minutes to produce one computer disk, all right? And the cost on labor is $32 per hour, all right? So we want to know how much will it cost to produce one computer disk in terms of direct labor, all right? So we're going to say 45 minutes, but look at the difference here. This, these are 45 minutes. These are 45 minutes and yet the pricing is $32 per hour, all right? So probably most students would probably fail or miss that one. So you have to convert these 45 minutes into hours 
and then multiply it by the $32 um, per hour or the labor rate. So we're going to say, we can just bring it over here and say 45 minutes. How many minutes in an hour? 60. So 45 over 60 times the labor rate, $32. and we get $24 per unit or per computer desk. So it will cost us $24. In terms of direct labor, it will cost us $24 to produce um, one computer disk. And then we go into the production over here. They are split. There is the variable component and the fixed component. So in terms of the variable component, we are told that $10 per direct labor hour. So we'd need to know the total direct labor hours that we have, all right, in terms of our total budget production. We'd need to know those for us to be able to calculate the variable component. And then for the fixed component, we'd need to know the total or total production in terms of units. And then that would, that when we'll be able to get our fixed um fixed component for production over it. So we'll leave that one for now because it's not explicitly stated in the question. We then go on to additional information. So under additional information, we are told that the budgeted direct labor cost for the quarter ending 31 July 2014 is $48,000. So what we literally then do is this piece of information was put in there so that you're able to calculate your total units or your total production or total budgeted production. All right, so at times they give you your budgeted production, they state it explicitly, or at times we actually have to calculate it or find it. So you have to be able to understand what the information or how the information is going to be used as you are attempting this question. So we now know that the direct labor cost, we now know that the production, the direct labor cost, total direct labor cost is $48,000. We are given, all right? And there's also something we know about direct labor cost. We know the direct labor cost per unit And we know it's $24, okay? So using these two pieces of information, we're then able to calculate the number of units that were actually produced. So number of units produced or production or budgeted production So budgeted production, we are, what we're going to say $48,000 which is our total direct labor cost divided by the direct labor cost per unit. And when we do that, we are then supposed to get our budgeted production in terms of units. It's usually as simple as that. 